foster parenting, being a business owner, working at Freddie Mac, a lot of, lot of different things that you've done, Linda. She volunteers at her church neighborhood and with other community organizations. She's been helping buyers and sellers since 2003, and get this, her husband Jamie joined her in 2007. So we're gonna hear more about that, working with your spouse. And they excel in residential real estate sales, negotiations, marketing, problem solving, and achievement of the client's home buying and selling goals. And I have been in some programs that Linda has done, and I know she does a great job. She's also a skilled negotiator with extensive experience in all types of transactions in any economic climate. So if you're looking, if you need a realtor, listen, listen in on our conversation today, and then talk to Linda, and we'll give you more information on how to connect with her. So Linda, You've been in, in real estate for, for, boy, through a couple of different market, market changes well, yes. here. yes, quite a few market changes, yes. It's an ever-changing market, actually, that we're in. So, yes, we survived the uh, great bubble. And I will have to say that of all of the buyers that we had helped to buy properties before the bubble, not one of them lost their home during the bubble. How many realtors can say that? Oh, that's pretty, that's amazing, yes. yeah. Yes. And that's mostly due because we educate our clients and we would not let them get into loans that we knew they would not be in a year from the time of purchase. So, very yeah, you, we were talking on, on the earlier about first time buyers and home mar and the programs you do for first time buyers. Yes. What, what kind of programs do you do? So, we will do first time home buyer seminars. We also do free consultations with our clients, just sitting down, figuring out what their goals are, where they're at, um, how their finances are. We want them in a, a strong position before they get into that home because we want to make sure that it's a home for a long time, not just for a little while. Uh -huh. And you were, you were talking about your nephew getting ready to buy a house? Yes, so my nephew will be getting his master's degree in about nine months. And he thought that he would have to wait for two years after that to be able to apply for a loan. But because he's getting an education, he'll have a degree, and he's also been substituting with Fairfax County, a uh, substitute teacher, he will be able to go right into a mortgage once he doesn't have to wait to have that two-year history, uh, working history. So he'll be able to buy sooner rather than later. Oh, that's... It's a very exciting news. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's so. So if you've got a home... Uh, first time home buyer in your in your family or your community that's that's good news yes. Um, yes. so working alongside your with your husband that yes. that must be a, <laughs> a real challenge and joy we have a fun time together not to say that it's not without its own stresses but um, we do have a good time together uh, we also have fun during the day when we're in, in different locations that we will send each other text messages and little emojis and, and uh, things like that. Or, um, so we have a good time. And we also, uh, opposites attract. So we are two different personalities. I'm more the facilitator of the team, and he is more the motivator of the team. So we work very well together. And when we do meet with clients, we meet together for the first time mm -hmm. so that they get to meet both of the us and then whoever is connecting more with the client is who takes the lead on the on the transaction oh that's a great idea because yeah. then you've then it, it really increases who you can work with because right. you're as you right. say opposites attract so you're you're different yeah. now how about and it, and I'm, I'm thinking of being in business with your spouse and maybe in real estate, it can be a little bit different, but there's mm -hmm. got to be somebody's the boss. Okay, so the big joke in our house is that I'm the boss. <laughs> and my husband tells everybody that he's my assistant. Oh, I'm just Linda's assistant. And it's really funny as we're working on different projects, we run everything through my email. 
and yet Jamie answers a lot of those emails and he will put his name under the email, you know, Jamie. And invariably they'll write back, thanks Linda, thanks Linda. <laughs> so I always get the credit. He does a lot of the work, I get the credit. So yes, we, um, we have a lot of fun with that joking around. And in fact, uh, my son one year for Christmas got me this plaque that it says, I'm not bossy, I just know what you should be doing. <laughs> That's probably true. Yes. <laughs> and and yet, you know, when I can can imagine that when you've got that great relationship, mm -hmm. that it really is fun having you, you increase what you can have conversations about. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind mm -hmm. of a mixed blessing because a lot of times, even on our times off of work. We'll think of that, oh, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you hear from this person? And it's like you keep going back into the work mode. Uh, one thing that we do uh, as a couple is, and we've been doing this for many years, but we have a date night, which is Thursday night. So we go out to dinner, go out to a movie, go out to a show, whatever, just to get out and, and, and just have that quality date time, quality time together. Well, and I know you're very aware of what's going on in the community, in yes. the local um area because you also you send out an email yes so our calendar of events, events. Mm -hmm. yes yes so that comes out every wednesday and it will have events coming up thursday through sunday so you, if you're looking for something to do and a lot of the things on the calendar are just kind of off the beaten path might be free or low cost um, i've had a lot of clients and friends that have discovered places in their own backyard they didn't even know were there so it's a great resource so we have a website which is wheelerteam.com and you, if anybody wants to get a copy of that calendar i can just add you uh, we don't pursue anybody and we don't you know hound you or anything <laughs> like that it's just a, a free service that we provide in our business now if somebody's got an event can they share it with you yes they ah, can so that's that's another great thing Yes. So how did you get into real estate? So, you know, other than wanting to look at houses. That's, that's what I, lo to I love houses. to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I was finishing up my youngest of three children. I homeschooled them through high school. And I just needed a little something to do on the side. So I started out part-time uh, just to kind of keep... Uh, kind of peace in the family, kind of peace in the home. So I would give her her assignments and then I would go do my assignments. <laughs> so that I wasn't nagging quite as much. Mm. Although if she hears this, she will probably disagree with that. <laughs> but um, anyway, and I went and took a, my real estate class, passed that, and my idea originally was to uh, fix and flip homes, buy homes, fix and flip, with my husband being a general contractor. Um, that did not really come to fruition because understanding that a real estate agent has to be under a broker to be able to practice real estate. So when you join the brokerage, you have all kinds of fees, probably two or $3,000 worth of fees. So I had to start selling real estate so I could cover my fees and found out that I just really loved real estate, not even just looking at homes, but being able to help people to purchase usually one of their most expensive purchases in their life which can be a very stressful thing. Mm -hmm. So again, just my love for helping people came out in that. And you found that looking at all these houses was I a lot of looking fun. At houses. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and getting gr great ideas and yeah. So whereabouts are, are, are you? In Virginia or what, what area yes. do you work in? So we are in Virginia. And as you mentioned, both my husband and I are natives of the area. And because of that, we know the whole area. And we uh, do the whole commuter footprint in Virginia. We also have referral agents throughout the United States and around the world, actually. So if you know somebody that's moving into or out of the area and needs to go somewhere else, I can actually find an agent for you, uh, for them, before they get to where they're going. Oh. And match them up with somebody that would fit their personality and their needs. Yeah, because buying a house is is such a personal. It is. I mean, it's such a big investment. So it's really important to have somebody that that cares about you, mm -hmm. that likes what they're doing, mm -hmm. and is invested in this. Exactly. 
Exactly. Not a part-time realtor. You want somebody that is full-time doing it because it is really, literally a full-time job and then some. The other thing is we do our business by referral, which is a little bit different model than what most agents do. And what I mean by that is most agents are so busy trying to find the next lead. They're cold calling people, door knocking, and they're not taking care of the clients that they have already. Mm. Have you ever gotten that call? Do you want to sell your house? Who do you know that wants to sell their house? You know, so we don't do any of that crazy stuff. We do an excellent job for our clients, go above and beyond um, our call of duty, and they're referring us to their family and friends. So we're not worried about where the next lead's going to come from because we know that we're going to get referrals. From well, and I read someplace that the average person sells a house or stays in their house seven years. Yes, that's an average right now. Yeah. So when you when you if you're in real estate for the long term then yeah you could conceivably have somebody that is a client of yours for 20 years exactly so mm -hmm. you could sell them you, you know and they're going to want to come back to you exactly yes repeat customers yes yeah so about 90 percent of our business is referral and repeat business so we occasionally will get a sign call that will turn into a sale or internet lead off of our website, something like that. So, and actually some of our best referral clients have never bought or sold a home with us because <laughs> they've been like our parents and have been in the same house for 50 and 60 years, but they're referring us as their trusted advisor to their family and friends because they know that we will take great care of them. So this is in in many ways oftentimes we don't think of real estate in the same way when when we think of other small businesses and yet mm -hmm. this is really cuz what you're talking about is so key for all business owners mm -hmm. is to to build those relationships and really get to know your your customers, your clients, exactly. So that you've you've built a relationship, and then they they want to come back to you. Exactly, exactly. And statistics from uh, the National Association of Realtors: there was an eighty percent turnover in real estate agents over the last two years. Really. So, <sighs> Yes. So what are your odds if you don't get referred to an agent? Are you getting a new agent that maybe is just off the assembly line that really knows nothing about real estate? Wow. I had 80%. Which means after they sell your buy, help you buy your house or sell your house, they're not even going to be in business right, exactly. anymore. Exactly. So you may be their one and only, which then you have no one to refer. Mm-hmm. Or you, For the next or you have no, no person to go back to in case there's problems. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We actually worked across the table from one of these newer agents about six months ago. And that agent did not show up for the walkthrough on the property. The walkthrough, it's when you walk through the property right before settlement to make sure everything's the same as it was the day you put the contract in. And they did not even show up to settlement. So we were there with the... We were representing the seller. We were there with the buyer during her walkthrough and her settlement, and her agent did not even show up. Oh, my goodness. So how would you like to have that agent? <laughs> no. No. I want, I want somebody holding my hand. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Wow. So you've seen – there's been a lot of changes in real estate over yes. the last few years. Yes. What, how does that affect what you're doing? So one of the – biggest changes since I've been in business in 2003 is the listings and all of the information being on the internet now. So you can go through, you can look through houses, you can look through pictures. There's a lot of do-it-yourselfers out there. Mm. What I've found is that now besides that, there's so much extra information. It gets very confusing. And how do you know what to believe, what not to believe, what's true value, what's not true value? Um, so you, it's really more important now than ever to have that um, educated uh, professional real estate agent in your corner to help you sort through all of the
the opinions and information and so that you know exactly what you're doing. Now, do you think some of the apps have helped buyers? Because I'll admit, I have Zillow on speed dial <laughs> <laughs> on my homepage on my phone because I love driving through a neighborhood and then, right, you know, yeah. what does that neighborhood say? Exactly. And I actually, we have an app that we can um, forward to anybody who wants that. And that app will show you driving through, you know, D.C. or th Philadelphia or wherever you're at, it'll show you what the prices of the properties are around you, which... You know, I'm doing that myself, you know, <laughs> so I'm using my own app. So that's a great thing. But when you get ready to purchase a property, how do you know what the value is? How do you know, you know, for instance, a for sale by owner, people think, oh, a for sale by owner, we'll save the realtor fees. Well, how do you know what the value of that property is? And usually that owner thinks the property's worth eight to 10% more than it really mm. is. Also, I've heard of quite a few lawsuits, people getting into contracts that they don't understand, and then it comes back yeah. to bite them. So you have legal issues then. Right. That's, that's yeah, one of yes. the biggest things that, I, that I've heard. And I haven't, is it just me? I have not seen over the last few years as many for sale by owners. Not as many. And you think, is that maybe because of some of the lawsuits? And, Probably so. And... Yes. Yeah. I mean, wow. like I said, it's more than a full-time job, and right. you really have to be up on all of the laws. We're in continuing education, continuing classes, educating, being on the top, the forefront of what's going on. Right. So. And, and so selling your house then becomes, because that's what I've heard from people that mm -hmm. have sold their own houses is, sell your own house, yeah, but it's a full-time job to, while you're trying to sell it. Exactly, yes, yes. So, good. Well, you know, we, we talked about the first time buyers mm -hmm. and then there's all of us that are buying and selling. And, and then there are those that are ready for this to be their last home. Um, right. What is, what about that in that case? Okay. So in the downsizing market, you basically have kind of that. I would say 50 year old to 70 year old downsize. And then there's the 70 to 100, 102 <laughs> downsizing or, you know, selling their house at that point, which are two different categories. But we do about a third of our business is with that senior population. And senior is anybody over 50. So we are <laughs> seniors, <laughs> which I hate to admit. <laughs> but um, yeah, well, since my son is 35, my oldest is 35, I can't lie too much longer. <laughs> On my age. And, and but, seniors are getting younger every seniors day. Seniors are getting as the now, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we do help in the downsizing, which can be a daunting task. Because mm -hmm. many people have been in their properties 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And then the question is, what do I do with all this stuff? If you're going from a five-bedroom house to a two-bedroom condo, you certainly can't take it all with you. Right. So what we do is... First and foremost, we listen to our client and we figure out the goals of that client, figure out what they're wanting to accomplish, and then we will consult with them as how best to accomplish that goal. And we mm -hmm. have um, vendors, trusted vendors that do estate sales, organizing, um, donation hauling, uh, you know, plumbers, electricians, anything that a person would need, we can help connect with um, the vendor that they need. And we also go above and beyond because we will actually meet vendors, meet the estate sale planner at the property so the client doesn't have to be there all the time to do that. So oh, that's yeah. just added value but no extra expense. Because I, I know um, last year we helped um, after my father-in-law passed. Oh, right. We had to clean his house out, and that that was a real challenge. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it can be very emotionally about you're emotionally tied to right. these memories, and sometimes it's hard to kind of get past that. Mm -hmm. But we're there again, holding hands to be able to help work through all of that. And in the downsizing, like I said, in the kind of that fifty to seventy. Um, age group 
you know, those are people where usually the kids have, you know, gone off to college or you know, they've just moved out. Now they're empty nesters. They're trying to figure out, you know, do I still need this four or five bedroom house or, you know, where do I go from here? What do I want to do? So, and do the kids want all their furniture that they... Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Can you come and get your furniture? No, I don't have room for it. So what right. do you... Yeah. Right. So it's just working through all of that and coming up with a plan to meet that. And again, part of it is what do you want to do when you downsize? Are you looking to travel more? You know, maybe a condo would be great because you can just lock it up and go and you don't have to worry about cutting the grass or, you know, shoveling the snow. Mm -hmm. So again, it's just about the client. What do they want and how we can help them to accomplish that goal? And we do quite a bit of counseling, whether it's marital counseling, you know, <laughs> opposites attract so between husbands and wives or family members. And one person may be ready, very ready to move, mm -hmm. and one person less ready. And Exactly. Yeah, I can, I can imagine because having done our fair share of moving, um, there, it's always there's always discussions going exactly. on around what are we going to take what are we what are we ready to let go of <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and and then people if you've lived in a house 10 15 oh some people get very attached to their houses very quickly mm -hmm. it can be hard exactly yes it's it not can be. even the stuff but leaving leaving that house possibly the community the neighborhood the the area that you're living in and mm -hmm. if you're moving locally or, or moving further away exactly and you know we we help through the tears and we give a hug when it's needed <laughs> and and we help to go back to look at that goal and continue to move forward but it, it's really about that client and sometimes you just have to step back and say you know what you just need to take a couple days and don't worry about any of this stuff and then we'll we'll okay. talk again in a couple days wow. so right. it's all about who is the client and what do they need now there's something else that you've done over the years um that involved a trip to guatemala would you like to share some yes. of that with us yes so I am a very well-known baby maniac, and uh, as anybody that knows me will attest to, I, early on, when my children were smaller, I actually started doing foster care for infants, and mm -hmm. just, I had nine babies in my home, one at a time, oh. over an eight-year <laughs> period, over an eight-year period, we worked for an adoption agency, and it was just such a joy, a very exhausting joy, but a joy nonetheless. And since then, I've actually traveled to China uh, and Guatemala, visiting orphanages and just helping the children there. And recently, I will actually be leaving on my third trip to Guatemala in August on a baby rescue mission. And what that entails is these babies are malnourished and dying, actually some very near death. And they're, these children are brought into the hospital, the nutrition center, and nursed back to health, and then returned to their villages. Mm. And they get ongoing care. So how did you get involved with this? So I had a friend that posted on Facebook that she was going on this baby rescue. And my friend lives in South Dakota, and I said can I get into this group? Is this a closed group? What do I need to do? And so she actually got me into the group. She was the only one I knew that was in that group. And so the first trip I took was April of 2015. And then I went back this past November. And I didn't know anybody on the trip, but I knew everybody by the time we left. And that was actually a medical mission trip. And that we went to three villages, very remote villages. We had four doctors, three nurses, and, you know, real estate agents, of course. We're supposed <laughs> to be on this medical trip. But I actually had the best job ever because I was handing out stickers to the children. I was handing out lollipops to the kids and blowing bubbles with them and playing games with them. I was the crowd control yeah, person because there was literally hundreds of people standing in line all day. Ah. And in the – so three remote villages – we saw over 700 patients in those three days. Mm. So it was just quite amazing. Wow, that, I can't, I can't even imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I could, if I was independently wealthy and I didn't have to sell real estate, although I probably would still sell some real estate, I, if I was independently wealthy, I would certainly do that probably full time. Wow. So I just love kids. Yeah, that, that's amazing. And, and there are so many, there's so many kids that, that need help and yes. all, all over, all over the world. Yes. There was um, actually a, a set of twins that were rescued in January. They were a month and a half old, only weighing four pounds. Mm. And they brought them in, nursed them back to health, and they're doing very well. So I, I have a feeling I will be able to meet them when I go oh. in, in August. Have but, you ever been able to, to meet, see the same kids? That yes. You've... When I went back in November, so it had been a year and a half since I was there, I actually saw three or four of the kids that were mm. at the hospital when I was there the first time. And because I took lots of pictures, I was able to show them the pictures of them and me and that I came back to see them, and they were just <laughs> very moved. It was a very moving experience. Did they recognize so they you? They recognized me, yes. Yes, and we're just amazed that someone came Said back. you came back. Yes. Oh, yes. That, yeah, that so has got to heart, be. Heart-wrenching and heartwarming all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So what would, what, would you, what would you hope to do more with, with that? Well, I am currently raising funds to support, to rescue, actually rescue the babies. And it costs about $1,200 to rescue one child. And this entails about a six hour trek by truck and boat and and horse and, you know, feet, uh, getting out there to them. It also covers all of their medical expenses, their nutrition, Um, it feeds the family. A lot of times the families will come in with them as well and it houses them, feeds them for $1,200. Isn't that an incredibly small amount of money when you think about it? That, so, yeah. Yeah, so I, I've had a goal since I got back from in November to uh, rescue three babies, and I'm only about $400 away from rescuing the third uh, one. So, yeah. <laughs> good, I, I see that. I see that yes. that coming, rescuing three babies. What a, yes. what a great Great and thing and I do, do things in threes because I have three children. And so <laughs> I also sponsor three kids in Guatemala. And I started sponsoring them in November. And I will actually be able to meet them when I go in August as well. Oh. So I'm, I've been collecting lots of things Thanks. to take and lots of donations. So, yes. So what would you, what would you share for, for anybody that was thinking about going into real estate? Because I know there are, there are people that that think it would be fun and and easy mm-hmm. and as as were any business that you create that you're gonna that you want to become successful at there's a lot of work to do and I, yet we ha- mm-hmm. we we do I know many people have this idea that oh I could sell I, I love houses I could sell houses easy Right. So what would you, to encourage and give them a re- reality check? So most people think that it's very easy money. Most people think that you make 6% on your sales. Well, the way real estate works is there's two sides of the transaction. So that 6% gets split 3% for the listing side, 3% for the buyer's agent side. Right. And then we all work for brokers. So the broker takes their basically a third taxes will take another third so out of that last one percent you're still paying for your sign fees your lock boxes all of your you know realtor fees and associations and all of your expense advertising postage um, all of that so that will come out of that so you're making probably about a half a percent oh wow <laughs> if, if you really are budgeting correctly mm-hmm. so it's really not easy money it's not fast money and there's a lot of nights where you're up at 11 o'clock trying to get that last initial because, you know, if you don't get this, then you're going to lose the contract. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of work and it is not for the faint of heart. And like I said, we do a lot of counseling, a lot of handholding. It's, it's just a very personal business. And, um, yeah. And I believe the average agent and I'm not an average agent, which is really good, but the average agent, uh, the National Association of Realtors Statistics, their income is about twenty-six thousand dollars a year. 
Well, who, who can who live, live on, on that? that? You can't live on that. And, <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. Not especially not in the Washington D.C. area. Exactly. Um, yeah, and because I'm sure that that people look at it and go, oh, you know, there's these million dollar homes. So even at a half a percent, mm -hmm. but you don't walk into mm -hmm. right. selling million dollar homes right. as a brand brand new agent. Exactly. So what is it? Yeah. What is what do you think draws attracts the best agents? I think the agents that stay that have that staying power are the ones that really enjoy working with people really enjoy helping people and really enjoy giving it's really about giving and you know with 80 percent turnover rate in two years there's other people that really just wanted to take take and you really have to give a lot before you actually get so and you know while we're on that subject if you look at um, real estate commissions. I see stuff all the time about don't pay the commission, sell it yourself, or you know, um, let us buy it from you and uh, save the realtor commission. So people are so ingrained with thinking they're losing money because they're paying a real estate agent, but in actuality, they're giving away their money. So you just have to really be careful. And that's another thing that has kind of creeped up in the last several years since I've been in real estate is, is the discount brokers and, you know, don't pay full fee, don't pay 6%, you know, I'll do it for 4%. Well, you know, you can only do that for so long before you're going out of business. And if you're, you know, you don't want to go out of business. So, right. right. Treat it yes, like a treat real it like business. a real business. Exactly. You have to have budgets and you have to have um, your expenses down pat and the, statistic wise if you pay a good realtor a full commission you will actually be leaps and bounds ahead in your pricing well i've, I've heard about the the realtors that they'll list you on the mls and they'll put you these places but they don't show your house they don't do anything else right mm -hmm. and then yeah then so so you're the one that has to organize all of that and right. be responsible. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of using them as kind of a, a way to get into the MLS because everybody, right? you know, you want your house in there. Exactly. And you want somebody to also be responsible. Right, right. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, there's two sides of a transaction. There are agents that will double side properties they'll have the buyer bring the buyer in and and sell the property and then get both sides of that commission but a lot of times what happens is that agent is now not working for either party because now they're just a party of the contract so they can't give either party advice we will only represent one person in the in the um, contract but we will also like bring an unrepresented buyer in which is a win-win because we're able to get a better price for our client and because it, it's all about getting the seller the most money and the best terms I did bring uh, an example and we have proved this over and over when people comment about the six percent we had uh, a property listing there was another listing on the very same street it was basically the same size lot the same condition property and again we're full six percent commission and we listed our property at 445 and we had multiple offers and we got four hundred and seventy six thousand dollars for that property the other property was listed at 425 and that agent actually double-sided that property so they brought the buyer in so mm -hmm. at 425 they actually got 421 750 for that property so we we're able to get our client for basically the same house, same location, same everything, $54,000 more. Do you think we were worth I the 6%? See. <laughs> see, it's really not about the commission. It's about that agent working hard for you to get you top dollar. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. 
That's a big difference. That's, that's a, that, that, is, that is a big difference. So don't yeah, fall for when, the, the save the realtor fees. <laughs> yeah. So if you could, if as you look back over over what you've done in, in real estate, if if you could kind of think back and, and start over, mm -hmm. so this would be advice for, okay, I'm, I'm going to go into to real estate. And, and I can see that most of this advi is advice is also for anybody in any business. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What do you wish you would have known when you had started? I wish I would have known to have more money in the bank for a cushion because when, I mean, it can be months before you actually get a commission check. So for instance, last year, we had no sales between January and March. That means when we finally did get the sale, we didn't get paid till like April or May. Well, I don't know how many people can survive for that many months unless you do have those emergency mm -hmm. funds in place. So I would say have your finances in order and have enough you know, for three to six months at least probably six months of bills because it's not um, an evenly paying job. It's not a job. It's a business. It, right. Which is pretty much the same for anyone for starting any business. Exactly. a business. Yes. Have that, mm -hmm. like you say, three months at least, but probably six months of exactly. being able to fund yourself so that you're not stressed. Exactly. And right. so, so what, what else would you, what, I know realtors have to have continuing education and, mm -hmm. and um, so what, what kind of classes? Because a lot of small business owners don't have to have exactly continuing education. Yes. So we take at least 16 to 30 hours of continuing education every two years. We also take classes in our Keller Williams office as well as as in the area, um, different title companies will, will provide classes or different networking groups will provide uh, continuing education kind of classes. Um, so, and I actually teach quite a few classes myself. So, and it's the teacher teaching is actually learning mm -hmm. quite a bit. And of course that comes out of my homeschooling background right. of educating, mm -hmm. so. What yes. kind of classes do you, do you have to take for your, because you, done the the real estate program mm -hmm. so i i i assume there's probably some changes because there's regulation right. changes regulation and, changes contracts are continually changing rules are changing um you have to con do fair housing um continue in, in fair housing law yeah so there's um quite a gambit of different kind of classes that you can take yes so that's another advantage to having an agent that has been in business for a while because they're keeping up with that. Whereas right. that new agent and not, you know, we've all been new at mm -hmm. some point. It's, it's, is there a sense that this person is, is committed to this mm -hmm. or is it a part-time job and they'll see if it works out? Right. That's the worst thing you can do is see if you like real estate or see if it's going to work out because it's going to cost you a lot of money. Like I said, it, it probably two to three thousand dollars just to get started because you have to join the associations. You have to join MRIS. You have to um, be to be able to get your key. You know, those are all oh. fees that are ongoing. So, yes. And the other thing is you have to find your next client. The real estate brokerage do not give you the clients, so that's a, another misconception. Mm -hmm. So, so there's a, a you you get really good at, and I know this is one of the the classes that you teach too is mm -hmm. relationship building. Exactly, because it's real. So, you know, if you're thinking about any business, this is something to pay attention to because. Exactly. You need to build relationships. Right. Build relationships. Build that trust. Stay in constant contact with your database, with your sphere of influence. Um, because out of sight, out of mind. And it used to be 
the principle was seven touches. You'd have to talk to somebody seven times before they really remember you and really mm. remember what you do. Mm-hmm. And now that number is up to about uh, 13 to 15, I believe. 13 to 15 touches. So imagine the work of following up, um, you know, making phone calls, writing notes. Um, we have client parties. We do a movie night in the fall and the spring. We have cookouts. We just... We want to get our the good clients together and just reward them just for being such great clients. Oh, that's yes. I mean, think <laughs> think about that. Think about that as for no matter what business you're in, um, if you got your clients together, even even once a year, right? For mm-hmm. a kind of a thank you, you know come and do something get together they get to meet one another exactly you look like the hero because you've introduced them Mm -hmm. they feel appreciated because you remember them right right yeah and it's funny with the younger kids so about a third of our business is that first time home buyer about a third is that either downsizing moving up or investing and then a third um is with the senior population and it's funny that the young kids you know we kind of adopt them as our own there are our kids ages and you know my husband will help fix something on the door that's loose before we leave or or whatever um so we just connect with these there our clients are not just our clients but m- most of them become very good friends i mean we get invited to birthday parties and christenings and and um, you know all sorts of things, so it's so, it's fun. That's the fun part. So yeah, think think about that. That you know you with with your clients, you build that kind of relationship, which is that's how you have that repeat business. Right, right. And I'm not going to call you and say, "Do you want to sell your house? Do you know anybody who wants to sell their house?" <laughs> I get those phone calls too, and it annoys me to no end. <laughs> No, but a great phone call for me is when somebody calls up and says, hey, I have this friend that's moving to the area and she needs your help. Or, I, you know, my son is getting ready to buy his own house. And um, it's just really a – there's some great rewards in this business. But it's a very tough business, and it's a very uh, – an incredible amount of work. Right, right. And then, and you, you mentioned that um, – about – the a third of your your clients are people downsizing and investing. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about investing, what mm-hmm. are you what are you referring to? So these would be people that might be flippers, uh, renovators, maybe buy and, and renovate and sell. Or there's a lot of uh, we work in a lot of markets with the down with the um, teardowns. So they're tearing down properties, rebuilding that kind of thing. Now, we've also been helping quite a few young people to get into their first home, but to buy very smartly. Then we've, um, so we had this one young gentleman, he bought a four bedroom townhouse, rented out three of the bedrooms, and we got the property at a very good price. Uh, the equity increased, he paid off a lot of the mortgage because he was getting rental income there. Then he went and bought his second property, took his his um, roommates with him, rented out the first property separately, and now he's got a, a cash flow property. And plus, his um, roommates are now paying for his rent where he's living. So there's lots of ways that you can do that. So the old way would be to get your home and then save up enough money to buy that investment property. But mm-hmm. you have to have about 20 to 25% down payment to do that. Right. But the other way, you can get in as little as 3%. And the next property, because it's now you're going to be your primary residence, another 3%. I think most people could scrape 3% together, have a yard sale, mm-hmm. <laughs> sell some stuff on eBay or Craigslist, and get that money, money going. So there's some very smart ways to invest. And again, we will educate the clients to, to um, make it work for them. So again, another another place to think about being in real estate and what how you can support yourself 
in real estate without being in real estate, without being a realtor. Exactly. And, um, exactly. And I know one of one of the concerns that people have is how do I how do I pay for this? But like you say, if you can if you can get something for a reasonable price, yes. Mm-hmm. And then and then rent it. Right. Right. And now, how hard is it to find renters? It's fairly easy in the D.C. area. And again, different neighborhoods demand, you know, higher rents and things like that. So again, purchasing smart. Yeah. So it's not really about how much you can afford. It's about the payment that you feel comfortable with. These are two different numbers. When you talk to a mortgage lender, mm -hmm. they're going to give you those two different numbers. But also, if you think about, you know, if you could afford a a $500,000 home, but maybe you went into a $400,000 townhouse and got the equity going in that and then buying up to the next property or even starting with a condo. Mm -hmm. And work your way and work up your instead way up. of, and then you've got some things that, um, I know my, my daughter, one of my daughters and I have been talking about this because that's what she wants to do is, is buy a house, then use that equity to buy another house mm -hmm. and get herself like say four houses right because you know it's kind of like one house is a lot of work mm -hmm. one rental but then you have four then mm -hmm. they're not quite four times the amount of work they're, right. they're more work right. but it's like it's like anything it that work doesn't expand exponentially because exactly. you get better at yes. doing things mm -hmm. so you know at that point when you have you know more properties you could either hire somebody to do the management on it or there's great property managers out there mm -hmm. that will take care of all that collecting the rents and you know calling the plumber for the stopped up toilet things like that so there's some great ways to be able to have positive cash flow have somebody else take care of the headache stuff and you're just reaping the war the rewards on that so yeah. that's that's and <laughs> You know, and depending on what people want to do with their lives, and that can be, once you get in, you know, once you make the jump into that first home, which is so scary for so yes. many people, yes. then doing it that second time is less scary. Right, right. And unless you're moving out of the area, because mm -hmm. that's always more work. Right. Um, but if you're if you're looking to to upgrade and you're staying in the area, then it can be very beneficial. Yes. And with some of the challenges that folks have in how are they going to fund a retirement? Exactly. Exactly. Which actually brings us to a very good point. We will suggest to we, like I said, we do some investor workshops. Um, and again, anybody can sign up on our, our website. Uh, for us to send them information on the next one. And what I really like to do is capture the people that are 40 to 55-ish. Because the worst thing, have you ever heard of, of the elderly that are on Social Security and you know they have their house paid for free and clear and they may have a half a million dollar asset okay. there and yet because they're living on Social Security, they have to decide whether to buy groceries that week or buy the medication they need. You know, it depends on where you're at in the Medicaid, uh, in the donut, I think they call it. So instead of getting to that point and trying to decide, well, how do I make this stretch and last, which it's not going to, if that same person had bought a one-bedroom or two-bedroom condo 20 years before or 25 years before, that would be paid off. They would have options. They could maybe move out of the five-bedroom house or the three-bedroom house into the condo, rent out the larger space for additional income because at that point you'd have two properties that were paid off. So I like talking with that, like I said, 35 to 55 range to be able to get that second property. At least you would make you would create options for yourself. And, you know, worst-case scenario, you sell one of the properties. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. then, and, and then it's not as much of an emotional pull because you already had this plan set up. We just uh, helped some clients last fall. They had bought a two-bedroom condo, 
30 years ago. They'd never lived in it. They had rented it out for 30 years. So they're getting up in their 80s, and they needed to be not in a single-family home and having to shovel snow and cut the grass. And they moved to the condo and sold the single-family yeah. property for, I think, 535 So do you think they'll be able to live pretty well on $535,000? Absolutely. And it was already in their mind, is that what they were, that's what they were going to do. So it wasn't that emotional drain on them. Right, right. And it's a place that they owned and and stuff. So as we get ready to wrap up, Linda, thank you. This has been so interesting. Thank you very much. (laughs) And, and I want you to tell people how to connect with you again and just, if you're interested in real estate from either because you, you're looking for a house or really the other piece of it is as an investment, mm-hmm. how can you use your house to invest? So. Exactly. So we can be found at wheelerteam.com on the web, um, and that has our contact information. Again, if you, um, we have a, a five-step senior plan. And we're happy to send this to anybody that would like that. We um, also, like I said, host classes throughout the year. We'd love to put you on an invite list for that. Or any questions that you have, just email us. Our phone number's Mm -hmm. on there. Again, it's Wheeler Team, W-H-E-E-L-E-R-T-E-A-M.com. And thank you, everyone. This is Jane Levis for Akia Garnett Ashman Brew. And we... We'll see you next week on Think Big.